Recently, the state of Uttarakhand in India witnessed severe disaster due to heavy rainfall. Cloudbursts and landslides added on on 16th and 17th June 2013. All districts of Uttarakhand, 13 districts of Uttarakhand were affected. According to official estimates, thousands of people have lost their homes and livelihood. There are around 6,000 casualties. A response operation was called Operation Surya Hope. Various agencies of uh, government, army, ITBP, NDRF, Indian Air Force, etc. were involved. I included other agencies like police, uh, district authorities, NGOs, and other agencies in relief and rescue operations. Army, Air Force, Indian Tibetan Border for Police, ITBP, NDRF, which is National Disaster Response Force, Border Roads Organization, Seema Suraksha Bell, Public Works Department, Local Administration, all of them work together. The reason catastrophe in Uttarakhand is estimated to have resulted in a huge loss to state economy. But it's not something which is new. India spends almost 2% of its GDP annually on meeting the cost of relief and rehabilitation on the aftermath of disasters. Monetary loss to economy is categorized into three as we have already mentioned, that is direct cost, capital cost. Indirect cost, which is damage to flow of goods and services. Secondary effect, short and long term impacts on overall economic performance. India has seen uh, in few decades a large number of disasters. Major disasters, you can say from 1984, the Bhopal gas tragedy, a chemical tragedy, chemical disaster. 2001, Gujarat earthquake. The 2004, Indian Ocean tsunami. And the terrorist attack in Mumbai of 2008. India is vulnerable in varying degree to a large number of natural as well as man-made disasters. 58.6 percentage, that is almost 60 percentage of the landmass is prone to earthquakes of moderate to high intensity, by the way. 12 percentage of land is prone to floods and river erosion, that is around 40 million hectares. 8 percentage land is vulnerable to cyclones. And 68% of cultivable area is vulnerable to drought. And other hilly areas, etc., are vulnerable to landslides, etc. But CBRN, that is chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear origin disasters, also do offer a threat. Heightened vulnerability to disaster risk can be related to expanding of population urbanization and industrialization, development with, within the high-risk zones, which is a serious problem. Environmental degradation and climate change added to that. Just, just see an interesting fact, that is, which I just came across. That's how much water does India use for irrigation? Just to analyze the vulnerability factor. Actually, India has the highest irrigated area in the world something which might surprise many of us because we see a lot of other areas in India which are not irrigated but India has the highest irrigated area in the world and it uses almost 85 percentage of the freshwater withdrawal which is a major chunk of freshwater which is used so is this way of irrigating our crops a sustainable way and irrigation requirement by 2025 has been estimated to be 83 percentage of total withdrawal or, or 910 BCM. 
in the context of human vulnerability to disasters the economically weaker segments of the population are the ones that are most seriously affected a government of india enacted disaster management act 2005 in december december 2005 It envisages uh, the creation of NDMA, which is a National Disaster Management Authority, SDMA, which is the State Disaster Management Authorities, DDMA, which is which are different District Disaster Management Authorities. So the NDMA is headed by the Prime Minister. State Disaster Management Authorities are headed by Chief Ministers. district disaster management authorities are headed by collector or district magistrate or deputy commissioner as the case may be to spear ahead and adopt a holistic and integrated approach to disaster management is what it is intended for that's why there is a shift from the earlier relief centric approach to disaster risk reduction approach so institutional framework they have actually have three levels or you can interpret it as four levels also if you want the three levels are the national level state level district level added on to that is the local level administration in the national level there is the national disaster management authority then national disaster management authority is chaired by uh, the prime minister then the second one body to that at the national level which is very important is the national executive Author- committee national executive community or nec of secretaries of different departments then nodal ministries in managing different types of disasters are also included for the setup at national level at the state levels state disaster management authorities and state executive committee of secretaries district level district disaster management authority chaired by district magistrate or district collector as the case may be there is also uh, funds and financial system for that assistance for that we have the national disaster management fund which is administered by ndma state and districts will administer their own mitigation funds that national disaster mitigation fund i was talking about national disaster mitigation fund there is also another fund which is national disaster response fund it will be administered by ndma through the national executive committee states and districts will administer their own state disaster response fund and disaster response fund for the district level A national policy on disaster management has also been approved by the Union government on November 2009. So the first was the Disaster Management Act of 2005, which was a significant set, step, and then is the National Policy on Disaster Management of 2009. Just have a look at this figure to have a rough idea on the disaster management setup in India. institutional structure for disaster management in india is actually in a state of transition because it's it's a kind of mixture of the old system and the new that is the new one is the national level state level and the district level disaster management authorities set up whereas we have the earlier in addition to this the national crisis management committee part of the earlier setup also functions at the center which which also plays an important role if you if you say uh, if you call it the na- the system and structure for disaster response you can say it is national crisis management committee then cabinet committees and group of ministers and crisis management group which are involved a uh, national crisis management committee in cabinet secretariat has top ranking representatives from various ministries such as pmo ministry of home affairs etc district level after the state level uh, which has a crisis management committee and crisis management group the most important level of understanding needed is at the district level because district magistrate or collector has responsibility for overall management of disasters in the district 
he has the authority to mobilize response machinery and has been given the financial powers to draw money under the provisions of uh, general financial rules, treasury codes, etc. All departments of the state government, including police, fire services, public works, irrigation, etc., work in a coordinated manner with the leadership of the collector during a disaster, except in metropolitan areas where the municipal body plays a major role. The district collector also enjoys the authority to request for assistance from the armed forces if circumstances so demand. There are various nodal agencies for disaster management. Coming back to institutional framework under the Disaster Management Act, uh, let's start off with NDMA which is National Disaster Management Authority. It's the apex body for disaster management. It is headed by Prime Minister and it has, has the responsibility for laying down policies, plans and guidelines for disaster management. But not just that, not just laying down policies, plans and guidelines, it also coordinating the enforcement and implementation work is also involved in its duties. So coordinating the enforcement and implementation for ensuring timely and effective response to disasters. Uh, what, what the need for the guidelines is of, of course to assist other central ministries, departments and states to formulate their own disaster management plans. It has a major role or it has the role to approve the national disaster management and national disaster management uh, disaster management plans of central ministries then uh, government will extend necessary cooperation etc for carry out its mandate um, it it has to oversee positions and applications of funds for mitigation and preparedness measures that's ndma added on to that the general superintendents direction and control of NDRF which is National Disaster Response Force are also vested in uh, NDMA and it is supposed to be executed by them. Uh, the national uh, there is also one more body which is National Institute of Disaster Management uh, which works within the policies and guidelines laid down by NDMA. And NDMA is mandated to deal with not just natural disasters, man-made disasters are also included in that, but other emergencies that require close involvement of security forces or intelligence agencies such as law and order situation, serial bomb blast, hijacking, air accidents, chemical, biological, radiological, nu nuclear, CBRN, weapon systems, etc. continue to be handled by the earlier mechanism which I mentioned of National Crisis Management Committee. NDMA may however uh, formulate guidelines, fa uh, facilitate training preparation activities in respect of CBRN emergencies that is chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear emergencies. The second body at the national level of most importance which is National Executive Committee actually comprises the Home Secretary as the chairperson and secretaries uh, to Government of India in ministries, departments, of uh, various departments and ministries like Agriculture, Atomic Energy, Defence, Drinking Water, Supply, Environment, etc. are part of the National Executive Committee. NDMA is a special invitee, by the way, into this NEC. It's actually the executive committee of NDMA and is mandated to assist the NDMA in discharge of its functions and also ensure compliance.
The District Disaster Management Authority will be headed by District Collector, Deputy Commissioner or District Magistrate, whatever be the case. It will also have the elected representative of local authority as a co-chairman. We also mentioned about another level of local authorities. Local authorities, of course, include Panchayat Raj institutions, municipalities, district, and uh, other boards, etc., town planning authorities, etc. It actually manages civic services. So they'll actually ensure they have a role to ensure capacity building. There is one body which is of most importance, that is National, National Disaster Response Force. the role and responsibility of central and state governments. It's actually Ministry of Home Affairs which is a nodal ministry in management of natural disasters. Other than drought, hailstorm and pest attack which are handled by Ministry of Agriculture. It's the Disaster Management Division which performs the functions in this case Disaster Management Division under the Home Ministry. The central and state government are jointly responsible for undertaking relief, rehabilitation, preparedness, mitigation and response measures. But the basic responsibility of course for understanding, undertaking these uh, measures uh, rests with the state government, concerned state government. The central government will supplement it uh, during um, uh, severe natural disasters etc. While post-disaster relief and reconstruction are resource intensive uh, it needs money uh, for that the present scheme of state disaster response fund national disaster response fund are based on the recommendations of 13th finance commission operated from 1st april 2010 to 31st march 2015. the government of india has constituted a multi-stakeholder national platform on disaster risk reduction as well Disaster risk reduction includes disciplines like disaster management, disaster mitigation, disaster preparedness. But disaster risk reduction is also part of sustainable development. So therefore we need to become more resilient than being vulnerable. We need to implement building bylaws and most importantly enforce them. Education programs in schools, national service schemes, NCC etc have a role to play and role of armed forces has been well appreciated across the globe but uh, it's a point to be noted that it should the armed forces or the army should not always be the first line of defense national disaster response force etc should be equipped more with personnel and technical and other upgraded facilities it's also necessary to have disaster assessment in the development plan a disaster loss assessment in the development plan actually it's sheer luck that india has not faced any major urban earthquakes in the past um, or in the recent past despite high risk of catastrophic earthquake occurring in many parts of india cities they are under the risk zone two and three etc there are 35 major towns with population of more than half a million each a major earthquake with epicenter anywhere near to them will affect millions for which search, rescue, emergency, medical infrastructure are not at all equipped. The pressure on urban growth, growth on various infrastructures, solid waste management are clearly visible in every urban center of India. If there is any disruption, it will just create 
chaos. The mechanisms must be so designed and adapted uh, and the lessons learned for pre and post disaster management between communities has to be shared. Given that natural disasters do not always follow national boundaries which are also important. Cross boundary issues and disaster management uh, at an international level should also be addressed and uh, enhanced using uh, various methods or regional co cooperation. Uh, regional response systems should be developed and pool capacity for mutual benefits are also important. But just look at this cartoon. It, it may seem a bit insensitive to a disaster situation um, like what has happened uh, recently but in reality this also happens. Use of post-disaster assessment using the post-disaster need assessment process will help recover quickly otherwise there will be a lot of aid but it will not reach the right kind of people. Ensuring effective use of resources and preventing wastage in time and energy is also important in the case of this response mechanism so that we can recover quickly. Policy of dis main mainstreaming disaster risk reduction in all our development programs is important. Uh, for example, the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Act uh, is an opportunity which may still have to be further put into productive use in this regard for mainstreaming disaster risk reduction uh, in development planning because a lot of work can be done using the Mandrega policy. Expe expanding um, effective use of observational and forecasting capacities and space technology etc are very important. Investment in capacity building for uh, community level, panchayats, NDO, uh, sorry, NGO <laughs> and government machinery at all levels are required. Investment here, mind you, is not really about the money involved, but about coordination, the intelligent use of the right kind of technology, accountability, and most importantly, leadership.